What is up guys, TSG here, and today I thought, being that, um, you know, the game was free to play and a lot of people got the game for free to play, um, I would make a um, more updated v video about uh, beginner's tips and tricks on how the game works and hopefully it benefits new players. Starting off, we'll start at the home screen here. You select continue, continue will automatically throw you into the last map you were on. Uh, this is single player. Uh, you are not able to play with people in this. This is also the only way to find the great one. You cannot find it in multiplayer, being that they don't want people to steal other people's trophy because it's the most sought after trophy in the game. It makes complete sense. Um, but in here, you can select your reserve and load into it and play by yourself. Um, but if you want to play multiplayer with your friends or find a lobby, because if you do not have DLCs, you can still play those maps. You just have to join somebody else's hosted map, which um, you can get kicked off of. Uh, you have no control over the time zone or any of that stuff. <clears throat> but you are able to play the map for the most part. Um, you can select which map you want to play. Say you don't have Soul Ridge, you can do that. You can select the distance of how far the server is, so if your connection. So if you select close, your connection will be better to the server. Um, over here, these show whether or not people can use dogs or ATVs on the server. Um, so that's what that does. And then you just hit create. Or you can create a game. Um, you can select the map. Um, but you have to own the map if you create a game like this. Uh, you can make it public, which means anybody can join your servers. So you don't want your diamonds or rares getting taken off your map. I don't suggest doing that. Um, I always just would do private when I'm playing with my friends. That way you have to invite them for them to join. Um, and you can select how many players and all that stuff. Um, now, you hit new game. New game will, it'll, well, like it says, create a new game. If you've, uh, like, max level right now, I hopefully they increase it eventually. They haven't in the last three years that the game, you know, the game's been out. Three or four years. Um, but level 60 is the max level. Can't get any higher, which kind of sucks. Um, you can find... I don't know if they have this on console, but you can find all the DLCs on this tab. Otherwise, you can just go to your system store and find it there. Um, you, know, you got all your settings in here. So if we just go into the game, um, when you load in, uh, you will always you don't start at an outpost. You start near one. Like on this map, I'm pretty sure the starting point is somewhere right in here. But these uh, green lookout towers, when you collect them, um, it'll open up the map, like, this gray spot just means, like, places that you haven't visited yet. See, like, all these trails of where I've gone and whatnot. Like, I never really hunt up here, so. Uh, the best way to get these outposts is if you have a friend that's already played the game, get them to put down tents at these outposts for you, and then you just spawn on them, claim them. Easiest way to do it. That's why a lot of these, I don't have trails going up to them. I just had my friends help me out with that. Um, but that, that, that's just means you haven't been to that area. So if you're like, Hmm, I wonder where I haven't been. That, that's those spots. You can check out to see if you haven't been there and maybe you'll see something cool there, but these will unlock this. Like it'll make it this lighter color, but it'll also show these houses in green, like these show up in green and you can go to them and claim them and you just go to them. Uh, and these question marks are just point of interest. Either that or they are tree stands. I wouldn't really worry about them. They're not nothing special. You can get XP for claiming uh, claiming them, the point of interest, but it's not really worth it. If you, you're out hunting and you come across one, sure, claim it. Tree stands. These tree stands are a waste of money. They're not really that useful. Hunting pressure is this purple stuff. A lot of new players don't... I've, I've seen people asking questions about... Uh, why am I not seeing any animals in a certain spot anymore after hunting there? It's probably because you racked up a lot of hunting pressure. The darker this purple gets, the more hunting pressure. And then just like in real life, if there's a lot of hunting pressure in an area, you're less likely to find animals there. Um, also, hunting pressure can wipe zones. So zones are like are these little symbols. So this is a mule deer drink zone. 
And if I were to shoot like three more animals on this spot, uh, this zone would get deleted. Uh, deleting a zone isn't the end of the world. Uh, what can happen is they'll end up moving like maybe over here or they'll find another zone that's nearby. Um, or maybe once the hunting pressure gets cleared up, they'll come back eventually. So with the hunting pressure, I usually hunt, like, don't kill no more than three three animals on a zone at a time. That way you minimize the hunting pressure in that area. And if you want to clear the hunting pressure, you just hunt elsewhere and it'll slowly go away. What I like to do is I like to just find a pond or something like down here and just blast away at some ducks. Easiest way to do it, you shoot like seven ducks and pretty much all your map is cleared up. Super nice. Uh, or what you can do is you can hunt out of these little tree tripods. They're really nice to keep the hunting pressure down. And so that way you can hunt more animals in that area. And not worry about deleting your zones. So they're, they're, they're just these little tower things. They also have some that you can mount into trees. But I like these more because you can place them pretty much wherever. But yeah. They raise you up off the ground and you can just shoot, shoot, shoot. You probably shoot like six animals. And not have to worry about hunting pressure. I don't know. Also, a good way to keep hunting pressure down is if you hunt with a bow. Bows keep the hunting pressure down. I don't like hunting with a bow, but if <clears throat> if you hunt with a bow, it'll keep the hunting pressure down too as well. Um, now, a little bit on the menus in here. Uh, your map here, if you... Um, I don't remember the buttons on console, but you can place waypoints, you know, that you can see if you want to mark a point of interest. Um, to where you want to go. In your inventory here, you got all your stuff. Uh, on here, you just drag on PC. I, it, I, I'm pretty sure you just, you just click and hit equipped or something on there, and it'll go into your inventory here. To add stuff to your inventory, uh, what you do is you go into here, and then you'll click, you'll click on something. My inventory is full right now, so I can't do that. But you'll click it. You buy it, and then what you do is you go to st so you go into the store, you buy it, what you want, and then you go to storage, and then you'll click on it here, and then it'll go into here, and then you'll go back into this tab, into your like menu tab, not into that, but your actual menu, and then you drag what you want, it'll show up in your ammo, weapons, or whatever you bought, and then you just drag it into your quick access, which is what's on your person. Your quick access is what's on your person. And then if we go into skills, the skills and perks, uh, you have a set amount that you get of each. And how you use them is up to you. I usually spend more on on, on the stalker, just because a lot of these are a lot better than ambusher. There's some good ones in here, but these end ones aren't really nothing special. So like this one, locate tracks, level 1, 2, and 3, they do different things. Tracking knowledge uh, is a good one to have uh, when you're picking up the uh, footprints. It tells you information about the animal. Uh, this, connect the dots, makes tracking a lot easier uh, to find the next set of tracks. Uh, this makes you quieter, which is nice for sneaking up on animals. Yeah. And then this, this disturb veg is a good one to have. Uh, this one will allow you to go up to the uh, bushes that are highlighted on the ground that look like they're highlighted like the tracks are and it'll tell you what if it's a rarity or not like what what fur type the animal is um if you want to you know if you're like if you level up and you buy through these and you're like oh, i want to change them up well you can reset them it costs money stupidly and you reset them you get your points back and you spend them again don't gotta re-unlock them and an ambusher uh, spotting knowledge is really good tells you a lot of information when you spot the animal uh, sight spotting really really good highly recommend getting this this is the one I get asked a lot how do you spot animals with your scope that would be this one this is how you spot animals with your scope perks perks are nice uh, so not these don't just uh, go to rifles like rifles doesn't just only apply to rifles it applies to Pretty much everything like handguns like sprint and reload do that with any your rifles shotguns anything um so breath control really good muscle memory really good steady hands 
really recommend unlocking all three of these. These green ones are ones that you can actually equip to your person. Uh, windage doesn't really doesn't matter at all in this, um, but it will t it can tell you like the direction that the wind is. I don't know. I I don't see this one at all useful. Zeroing. A lot of people use zeroing. If you can't really figure out the bullet drop in the game, this is a really good one. Uh, you can set it. I don't have it unlocked, so I can't show you it, but it has like three different settings to it like a 65 yard range 150 and like 300 i don't use it personally because i usually forget that i have it zero to 300 on an animal that's 100 yards away and i miss so i don't use that um, but it is, it is really useful um then you got this one ranger uh this is the one i have equipped just so i could get rid of it because i reset my perk points so i could change them up you can reset these perk points as well, just like the uh, skill points. Um, this one just gives you a, an approximate distance. Um, so if you if you have both of these fully unlocked uh, and you want to change them, you just uh, equip the other one and it'll get rid of it. So if you find out you don't like zeroing and you want something else, you can do that. But yeah, there's all kinds of different ones. If you look through these, it'll tell you the description of what they all do. So if you can you can cater to the way you want to play through doing that. Um, codex. So your hunting log here, if you click, or the hunter, if you click on this, your profile card tells you all your stats, um, all your weapon scores, and all that stuff. And then if you click hunting profile, it tells you how many uh, trophies you have, diamonds, uh, shots hit, percentages, longest vital hit, that stuff. Hunting log history shows you your uh, recent trophies here, latest harvests. This is what shows you your your most recent claimed items, your animals. History shows you like of different uh, big tro bigger trophies, like your your golds and your diamonds that you've gotten, and um, and then these just give you information about the maps. Nothing really special. And to access trophy lodges, there is no way to access it from the main menu. It's kind of sucks. So what you do is you just load into the single player tab, like I did, and then you click trophy lodge, and then you select. The lodge that you want to go into and then you can create more lodges you can have up to five i think you can also go into your friends lodges but to buy these these are all dlcs um so if you kill an animal you can taxi it and it'll save so say you don't have the money to get a lodge yet and you're saving up don't worry because if you claim it and you taxi it you're fine it'll stay saved whenever you get a lodge you can go place that down at that time uh, those are all just settings. Um, I'll show you what the whole taxi and thing looks like. So we'll go claim that and I'll show you what I was talking about. So you come up to your animal, claim it. It shows you your... So this shows you your... You know where your shot was and I think if you click down on a joystick or a trigger on controller it'll show you the full body model and not the x-ray if you do true score you can see a close-up of the antlers and whatnot they kind of don't fit in the screen as you can see at the top it gets cut off because they made this a blank space I don't know kind of annoying but over here it shows you all your stats on the animal you know level three these go up to level five to be a diamond so then you got these checklists these checklists are how you get your trophy so this trophy rating is silver is 72.80 gold uh, 155.30 and diamond it has to be a 217.20 to make diamond um and you also cannot shoot these animals in the head a uh, small game doesn't matter you hit them in the head doesn't matter uh, but your regular Animal species do not shoot them in the head unless it is the alligator on the new map that's coming out on December 7th. The checklist. So, first one is proper ammo, ammo type. So, I used the Mosin, which is a class 3 through 7, and this is a class 3 animal up here. So, that gives me the first check, proper am ammo. Like, if you shoot a whitetail, they're class 4, so shoot it, shoot it with a weapon that is in that range of a class 4 weapon. Uh, you can only shoot the animal two times or less. If you shoot it three times, you won't get the full score out of this animal. 
intact trophy organs, which means the head. So as long as you don't hit the head, you're good. Um, and then you have to hit one vital or more, which is uh, liver, the liver here, and forward. So liver, lungs, heart, or you can hit it. If you hit it in the spine, you used to be able to spine shot animals, which was what a lot of people did because it just dropped them instantly because there was a quick kill timer. That That's not a thing no more. There used to be a um, consecutive harvest. You had to claim like four animals, and then if you claim the other one, you get more points. Uh, so that's that doesn't it's not a thing no more. But if you hit this l lower neck right here, the spine inside the neck, it still counts as a vital for some reason. Don't know if they've change that or if they're going to but if you hit it here in the neck you will drop it instantly and you'll still get a vital hit now to taxi it uh, costs money here so if you don't have money to taxidermize an animal and you want to save it you can hit save harvest and it'll go into a save harvest screen and then when you're in your lodge you can go to your saved harvest i will show you that in a little bit um so i'm not going to taxi this but you can taxi it so we'll i'll save it and now it'll be in your your thing want to taxi it so you hit accept, so then we'll go trophy lodge, go to the lodge, and then if we come into here, and we go, go into our trophy manager here, saved harvest, there's our access deer. You can click it, you can delete it, you can taxi it, so that way, you can save up to 10 harvests, by the way, so 10 of these you can save uh, before they overwrite each other. Like you'll... You'll claim, so say you have 10 and you hit save on another one, it doesn't just get rid of one randomly. Uh, what it will do is it'll ask you to swap that one out if you want to, and you can choose like, say you have a, you just got a diamond access deer, and you had a gold access deer saved in here to taxi because it looked cool. Well, you can overwrite that gold because now you have a diamond and it'll replace that one in there. So that's how that works. And then in the trophy lodges, you can, you can place trophies down and on these different plaques and stuff. I recommend the Safari Lodge, the biggest one. It's got the most plaques. Uh, they have multi-mounts in here. Scroll through here. Look through them. Show you different, different styles of multi-mounts for different species. And it'll tell you on the right over here what, uh, what animals and male or female, what you got to get for that... Uh, this doesn't load you back into the exact spot you were standing, by the way. It just puts you, like, at a tent or a house that's n nearby of where you were last. The stuff in the bottom right of my screen. So, this compass, that green, I never knew what it was for the longest time until somebody explained to me. Um, that is the direction the wind is heading. So, right now, the wind is blowing to the north. So, if animals are that direction, they will smell me. And animals that way will not, so they are less likely to go alert. Um, they do have scent eliminator. It has like a 30 in-game, 30 minute in-game timer on it. Um, it doesn't 100% work. It just betters your chances of them not smelling you. I do recommend getting DLCs. I have a couple videos on uh, the best DLC weapons and the best non-DLC weapons in the game. I'll link those in the description if you want to check out those. Uh, my opinion on the different weapons you can you can get away just fine without buying dlc weapons just fine on this game um but the dlcs are well they make the game fun but they also make life easier because a lot of them are really powerful which is nice uh some guns are dlc packs like smoking barrels pack will get you uh you know this m1 comes in there the, the semi-auto it's once you buy that weapon pack, it'll automatically, um, it automatically just gives you it. You don't have to spend in-game currency, you get it instantly, but you do have to buy the ammo for the gun. Now, whereas, like, the 300, uh, you buy the Yukon map for that one, and then you use in-game currency to unlock it. So that's how that works. You unlock, you get the ability to get the gun, you just gotta buy it with in-game currency. Um, sorry, I'm all over the place, I know, um. But again, to the bottom right of our screen, that uh, little deer with an F is my range thing. So if I hit F, it gives me a rough estimate of how far that tree is where I was aiming. Uh, the next, the little heart is my heart rate. So if I hold my breath, see how it's starting, there it goes. See how it's pulsating, and then, yeah. 
that's your heart rate. Um, the next one is, the circle is your visibility to, like, animals. So, wide open circle means you're really visible. Under The line and then underneath means you're less likely visible. And then if you, like, hop into a bush, like a Fortnite noob. Uh, the straight line means you're, you're still visible, but, like, very less likely. And then if you lay down into something like this, I'm pretty sure there's a smaller line. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it, but there's a really tiny line that'll pop up. That means you're, like, not visible. That. That line. That means you're, like, basically invisible. And if you stay like this, they're, they probably will not see you. And then, of course, the next one is your sound. When it's red, you're really loud. And, and whatnot, so that's how that works. And then if I spot an animal, so up in the top right, it tells me the health. Uh, the class is underneath the health there. That's a piebald. I'll shoot that so you guys can take a look at it. They're not really special, but uh, it tells me the weight, uh, what it's doing. Right now it's fleeing. The level, it's a level 1 because it's a female. These piebald axes here aren't, they're cool, but they're not that rare. They're pretty much, they're, they're everywhere. They look cool though, but I'm not going to save that. But that, that information it was showing me was from all the perks that I have equipped or collected in skill points and stuff. Um, what else here do we cover? And if you're, if you're watching this and you, you have tips and tricks of your own, I'll leave them in the comments, you know, it'd be helpful. Maybe I learned something that I didn't know. So we could talk about spawns, how spawns work on this game. Nobody truly really knows. Um, but there's a couple ideas floating around there of how it works. And the one that I was told, and it makes sense, is... So say you shoot, shoot an animal. Imagine up in the clouds here is just a big cloud of animals, right? So, you shoot something, you just shoot an animal, and then uh, once you go and claim, you make sure you claim everything you kill. Because if you don't claim it, then it won't spawn. Or there won't be a respawn to it. So you, you claim that animal, so say you shoot a red deer. You walk up, you claim it, another red deer will spawn. What it will spawn at, nobody knows. If it's a males can spawn as females, females can spawn as males. I've shot massive herds of female elk that all there was was females, and then a male, a couple males spawned in that herd. So it's completely random. Uh, it's just luck based on on what kind of spawns you get, and the more you play, hopefully the more lucky you get. Um, but you just sh shoot everything and make sure you don't cause too much hunting pressure in the area, but just. Just shoot stuff. If you don't don't just be like, oh, that's not a very big animal. I'm not gonna kill it. Because if you don't kill it, nothing will respawn. You'll see the same thing over and over and over again, and that's no fun. So you shoot it. Another one will take place uh, where it spawns. You don't know. It could spawn on that same zone, or it'll spawn on another zone elsewhere on the map. But something will replace it, and it will be that same animal species. But it'll 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 spawn, and then you just keep doing that until hopefully you get something cool. So these tents and tripods uh, are really useful. It's a DLC. Um, place these tents. They're basically mobile outposts is what they are. Because you can access garage, all this stuff. Everything in here. Um, and they're, they're expensive. They're like 16000 a piece, which is a little outrageous. Um... You can place down 12 total tents, I think, and like 30 or 25 of these tripod stands on them on each map. And once once you place them down, they stay. Um, so you don't got to worry about them disappearing. But if you place them on somebody else's map, uh, they go back into your inventory when you leave the map. Sleeping here is how you change the time on the map. So say I want to hunt this puma zone here is 6 a.m. to 9. What I like to do is, so I'll go, I'll go about 30, 40 minutes into the zone, so that way there's something on the zone usually, and then I will go work my way towards said zone. Uh, it costs money to change time. It goes up a little bit at a time. It, the most it will go up to is 2,500. 
So if you're changing the time a lot, it'll get expensive. Uh, these tents and tripods, when you place stuff down, it, there's a scare radius of like 300 yards, 250 yards, 200 yards, 250 yards, something like that. Um, and when you spawn on them, there's also a scare radius, but it's a lot less. It's like 150 yards. So I always place my tents a little bit away from where I want to go. Uh, tripods, place them wherever you want, but there's you just walk up to them. There's no uh, scare effect when you climb into them or nothing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I do go through my comments a lot. And uh, some people always ask, like, how do you get... Um, colored tracks because you can change the color of your tracks on the ground like if you're on a snowy map you definitely don't want to use a white because it's a little bit harder so if you go into your your uh, system and then game uh, uh, if you do f this uh, where is it uh, unit system will change um, between yards and meters and all that stuff so you can change that here you can also change it from pounds and kilos by clicking that um, but you can change the different tracks and different spotting outlines of everything the picture here this is only really useful for story missions on console but on PC uh, you can take screenshot it basically takes a screenshot and you can go look at it later um, but you can't on console so it's really pointless to use which kind of sucks because it's really fun to use um, L on the, well I was gonna say L but your light so if you're at night you have to have your light on to see the tracks on the ground if you're night hunting otherwise you won't see the yeah tracks the light does not scare animals away by the way so don't worry about leaving your light on it doesn't affect the animals in any way um so a good tip for knowing the different size for animals so all predatory animals go to a level nine to make diamond so uh, being so that what that means is like a level eight uh Puma cannot make diamond. I don't think they can. Some some animals that are like like a level two whitetail can make diamond sometimes. Very rare, but they can. But usually a level three makes diamond. Sometimes it's not guaranteed. There are trolls. When somebody says it's a troll, it means they got the biggest level of that animal, but it didn't make a diamond. So that happens. So it sucks, but it happens. Uh, but all predatory animals go to nine. So when you spot them, it'll say like 5 medium, 7 very hard, and then 9 legendary is what you want to look for. Those are the big ones. All predatory animals go to 9. The only other animals that go to 9 that aren't are cape buffalo, water buffalo, and red deer. Also, something I did leave out with the uh, inventory in here. Um, so if you go to your character, you can you know, change the way they look and whatnot. Um, backpacks do increase your total carrying capacity, but... They do make you more visible, and they make you more noisy when you're moving through brush. Um, so, either use a small backpack or don't use one at all, and just try and carry what you can. It's the best way of going about it if you're trying to stay as stealthy as possible. How that goes with that. Uh, four wheelers as well. Uh, they're free to grab. You just spawn them in. Hit request, and I can get out of the door. Boom, four wheeler. Then you just hop on and drive around. Um, four-wheelers scare anything away from, like, 500 meters, so. Uh, the dog DLC, don't really recommend it. It's not really worth it. <clears throat> Fun to mess around with sometimes, but they're not really that useful. Uh, there is no cross-play in this game, so you cannot play PlayStation with Xbox or PC with console or any of that stuff. So, if your friends are in different consoles, you cannot play with them. And I do not see them adding a crossplay like that into the game. Um, just because it would probably cause a lot of bug issues. That should cover pretty much majority of everything. If I see a bunch of comments of stuff that I forgot or left out, uh, because I'm sure I did, um, I'll make a part two to this. So if you have any tips or tricks for anyone, leave them in the comments. And if it's something I missed and feel as it's important, I will... Take note of it, and if I get enough stuff to make a video about the tips and tricks, I will make another one. Otherwise, um, if you have any questions, like I said earlier, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any other tips and tricks, leave them in the comments so people can see them. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. Hopefully it was helpful for you new players, and happy hunting.
Have a good one.